And a lot of people are dying on their way to Israel, a lot. And like, what does that mean? That on the way to Israel, so many people of Israel died. And so to answer that question, I wanna read the text now on the level of Remez. That's the representative level, the symbolic level. That means that we're reading the stories in the Torah as maps representing our lives and a guide of how to express our souls in the world, how to live in a relationship with our creator, how to live a life toward our destiny. These stories are just symbols on a map guiding us where we need to go. And that's why it's not right to read the Torah just on a shot level, on a textual level, on a literal level, and then to see God as like a vengeful God against the Jews who sinned against the spies. The Torah here is recording a pattern of being, how to manifest yourself properly in the world, how to act in harmony with yourself to fulfill the purpose for with which you were created. And so the Torah is showing us how human beings are in the world and how we are called to live. So if you think about it, Israel started off in the desert, started off in Egypt. And as everyone knows, that's the natural state of men and women. We are all enslaved. That's the default. That's the map. Maybe we're slaves to our fears, to our insecurities, to our lust, to our bodies, to our laziness, to our pride, each person in their own journey. But all of us start off in an Egypt. And our life's journey ahead of us is meant to take us all the way out of slavery to our promised land a journey to become the person that we were created to be. That's the map. And life in this world, outside of the garden, if you think about it, it's like a desert. That's the analogy here. That's what it's representing. Think about that. Life is not easy. Life is not comfortable from the get-go. It's harsh. It's filled with tragedy. And then humans come along and make it even worse with the, their evil in their own heart. And somehow, though, the desert is the perfect place for revelation. Somehow the desert is the perfect environment, the best place for the human spirit to flourish. It's where our spirits thrive. It's precisely the hardships and the challenges that set the stage for triumph and victory, courage and heroism, true compassion, selfless giving. It's the place that we can walk most humbly with God and to carry his name in our lives and to strengthen and inspire the people around us. The Torah is teaching us that our ability to overcome the challenges and transcend the malevolence in this world is more powerful than the broken reality as we see it now. And it's the spirit of man that's going to redeem reality. That's what Zechariah said. It's not through might and not through power, but through my spirit, says Hashem, through my spirit. And that's our spirit will thrive somehow in the desert of reality. And so you're in Egypt and you want to get to Israel. <laughs> you see the truth and what happens? Most of you wants to deny it. That's like, oh my goodness, what you want to give up? The spies start voicing these opinions. You want to turn around, but you, you know, what are you going to do? You want to enter in to the next level of life, um, it's not going to be easy. You know, like parts of you are going to have to die away. Things that you held dear, thoughts that you knew were true, things that you were so connected to, your own identity, you thought were parts of who you were. I mean, I have one friend that is massively overweight. I mean, it was hard for him to walk for long periods of time without hurting his back and hurting his knees. He was struggling with different types of diets for decades. And then one year, somehow he cracked the code. And he said, I just always saw myself as a fat guy. That's what he told me. He said, I had to let that guy die so a new me could be born. And that's just true about all of us. A whole nation of Israel is representative of one human soul. And the first thing you need to know is that within men and women, there are a lot of voices, a lot of spirits, a lot of uh, forces. Many forces are operating within us. It's like our past, our culture, our traumas, our instincts, our souls, our minds, our emotions. There's so many voices in the story of the spies on the way to Israel. It's just our own story toward our own ideal. It's like on the way to becoming all that we can be, on the way to Israel, we encounter a truth and the spies see that reality is not easy. The path ahead is arduous and challenging. And it's like, uh-uh, I don't want this. 10 out of the 12 spies are like, nope, sorry, I'm not doing it. But then there's like two voices that are still in us, the Joshua and Caleb inside us that are beyond our fears and beyond our past and beyond our laziness, that are beyond our body. Voices telling us that we can handle it, that we can do it. And it's like calling us toward that adventure. It's like you want to move into the promised land of your life. You're going to have to stare at those opposing voices and just stare them down. 
voices. That's like without strength and courage to face those opposing voices, those opposing voices, you don't stand a chance. That's why Moses' final blessing to Joshua is strength and courage. Chazak ve'ematz. That's what we need in order to just confront the truth of the reality of becoming who we need to be. And when we leave Egypt and we venture into our destiny, it's not like the journey is easy. It's like on the contrary. It's like from the get-go, as soon as we break free, we start on the journey. It's like, oh, we don't have any water. We don't have any food. You might totally collapse and fail and worshiping golden gods of golden caps and wrong values. And you might have set the wrong goal. You don't know. You're just trying your way out there. And you bump into walls along the way and you fail and you fall. And then you rise up again. And every time you fail and you fall and you rise up again, parts of you are going to be fixed. Parts of you are going to die. That's what all of that death is about in the desert. Huge swaths of us are slowly going to be peeled away from us. The parts of us that are weak, the parts of us that we identify with, but they're hurting us. They're blocking our development. They're stunting our growth. They're disrupting our family. They're hurting our loved ones. I mean, those need to be sacrificed. Those need to be burnt away. Those parts of you, a lot of you, a lot of just needs to die in order for us to be reborn so that we enter into the land of Israel. Think about that. The generation that enters into the land is an entirely new generation. The older generation had to go. Think about it, 40 years of work, 40 years of discipline and persistence and ups and downs and failures and mistakes and fallings and getting back up. By the time you're at the top of the mountain peering into the promised land, you're not the same person when you first left Egypt. You're a totally new generation. You're a new person. And from where you started until where you are now and until who you could be, that day-to-day, moment-to-moment choice to choose to be your best self, the best version of yourself emerges when you continuously are persistent on that path, constantly choosing the light, constantly walking in the right way of the inner voice of Joshua and Caleb that's guiding you towards courage, that's guiding you towards strength. It's like, I don't know, all of the old habits like smoking or drinking, lazy, selfish, fearful, resentful. That's long past. A truer version of yourself emerges. A truer version of you. It's like your potential was actualized. That's what purity is. Hi, my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. There are live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds and nationalities. It feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets, unfiltered and uncentered directly from the Land of Israel. We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to Scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Callan Ardell, USA. Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feasts, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel to help us navigate through these turbulent times. These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each and truly each session is the best one yet. Tehila is a tremendous asset and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for centuries. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship. Myself, Rabbi Ari Abramowitz and Tehila Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24-6 via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. 
So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.